I'm Charles Dill, and I'm a professor in the School of Music. Uh, ordinarily, I teach uh, courses on Italian opera, uh, Haydn, Mozart, Beethoven. Uh, but this semester, for the first time, I'm teaching a course on Delta Blues. And it was a brand new course. It was my first new course in a long time. And uh, it was a course I inherited. It was, uh, it was a topics course, as you can see. And I just needed to come up with a good topic uh, for the course. But it came with a couple of restrictions that um, really affected how I used Canvas. And that's, that's <coughs> what I'll be talking about today. Uh, one of the stipulations was that it needed to be a fairly large enrollment, about 100 people, uh, with six sections. And two of those sections needed to be column B. But only two of those sections needed to be column B. So I had to, to structure a course for everyone, but then somehow also uh, uh, address the, the needs for COM-B. And of course, there are a lot of requirements for COM-B. And so I needed to do it in a way that was coherent and, and made a lot of sense. Uh, I learned about uh, Canvas uh, last summer taking the blend at UW course. And um, so I was able to, to establish a sandbox last semester to get started and uh, take some of the workshops. And I think the most important, and again, I, I may be reinventing the wheel for all of you here today. I, I never use DTL as anything more than a dumping ground for PDFs. Uh, but uh, uh, that being the, the case, uh, I, I, there are a couple points I want to make. And I think the most important when I learned at a workshop uh, with uh, KK Konasek uh, last semester, I was the only person who showed up. It was on grading, and uh, she, we went through my grading uh, material in the sandbox. And then, because we, we had time, and I was the only student, uh, she said she started looking around with what I was working with, and she gave me one really important piece of advice, and that was she said everyone is telling us to make this navigation bar as simple as possible. And as soon as she said that. Everything made sense to me. Um, uh, oh. There it is. Okay. Uh, you know, you, you see this in students' notebooks when you when you look at them, right? Uh, everything tends to be in a big list, and if everything's in a big list, then everything's the same. And it was at this point that I understood finally that, that there are a lot of different things going on in this list, that some things are places where you make stuff, some places are places you put things, uh, but that really very few uh, items in this list involve display. And so at that point I realized I can just run everything out of these display-oriented items and, and it'll all make sense. So. Uh, <clears throat> what I did was uh, design a homepage that is pretty much informational. I like the idea of students going down the rules of the course every time they, they arrive here. And um, uh, so most of this is basic information. But where it got interesting for me was <coughs> I, I, I needed something, as you know, it, all of your, your, your assignments and exams and so on will be listed at the bottom of this page. Uh, so the biggest requirement for me was to be able to differentiate between assignments everyone had to do and assignments that only COM-B students had to do. Uh, and so I devised uh, these prefixes that allowed me to do that. Uh, general assignments, GA, COM-B assignments, CB, so that when these things appear down here, the students can immediately see where whether it's relevant to them or not. Uh, and then, in, in the process of explaining the class as a whole in COMB assignments, I, I had the opportunity to create a separate syllabus for the COMB students, which I linked here. Uh, and. Uh, brought up over here so that they can go through and um, um, understand what's required of them. The, um, I included the COM-B requirements because I wanted them to know that the university was making me do all that stuff uh, uh, with them. Um, I, this hasn't really paid off, but I did a description of, of how you could 
someone who's not a musician could find good topics, good five or six, seven, eight page topics uh, in music, simply by, by, by looking very closely at a piece and thinking about uh, its language and what it's saying. Uh, what I had to anticipate was the students came up with great topics and they didn't, they didn't really need this. And their topics are often uh, much more interesting uh, than what I suggested here. Uh, I surveyed the assignments, how I was going to meet those criteria. Um, and I tried to explain each sta stage of the way. And then here, and I also did something like this on the other page, and I'll, I'll mention it in a moment. But I, I, I wanted to have uh, resources, so I've linked to the Writing Center, I've linked to the UW uh, uh, page on plagiarism. Uh, I've given them a bibliography that includes everything on reserve. Um, and, uh, yeah, and all pretty straightforward. <coughs> Uh, and I did something similar to this. This is back on the home page, um, uh, at the bottom of the home page. Uh, the same bibliography, that's the reserve list. I included a document on writing and speaking about race uh, because this is a large group and, and they vary widely in experience and comfort level with talking about these things. And it's a document I adapted from uh, Alexander Shashko's class over in uh, African American Studies. Um, I didn't want to spend a lot of time in, it, it, with music. It's always tricky, you know, uh, how much are you going to teach them about music? How much do they need to know about form? So instead of belaboring it in class, which would um, immediately make them nervous because they're not going to trust their ears uh, on how to hear things, what I did instead was, was make a series of animations so that you could learn how to count to 12 in a 12 bar blues uh, tune. And uh, in, in another one, there's a series of animations that show you all the different ways the expression call and response is relevant to hearing a blues tune. It, it means a lot of different things depending on what you're trying to say. And then finally, uh, and I, they're not using this as much as I hoped they would, but I, I, uh, I'm actually going to say something about it on Monday. Uh, it's really important to understand what generation a singer belongs to, because the, uh, uh, most of those guys were all the same age. They were all born around the same time, but you have someone like Robert Johnson, who is uh, recorded in 1936 and 1937, and he's dead by 1938. Well, Muddy Waters is this, almost exactly the same age, and he's not recorded until 1942 and 1943, and doesn't become famous until about 1955. Holland Wolf is recorded until 1950 and 1951. He's the same age, right? So you need kind of need to know when these guys are born to appreciate uh, what's going on. So I, I, I had a, 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 a big group of resources I wanted to use uh, that I wanted them to have. Of, you know, so that maybe three weeks in the class they could say, well, I, you know, I think I want to go back and look at this again. I, I, I wanted it to, to be around all the time for me. Uh, I, I, the, the, the one thing I hadn't done with calendar that you mentioned uh, was um, use it for scheduling. I haven't tried that, but I, I like that idea a lot. The way I've used it is I, there were, you know, there were, I was doing a lot of experimenting with assignments, but I really didn't, want to commit to some of these assignments until I got the semester going. And if you create a due date in calendar uh, for something, a, an exam, for example, as I still do old-fashioned blue book exams at midterm and at the end of the semester, so there's nothing in Canvas there. I can create the, those in uh, calendar. Uh, I created some of my early writing assignments in calendar so that I I uh, didn't have to write them out in assignments yet. And of course, when you do that, then those immediately appear uh, as calendar items uh, in this list. So you've got this great placeholder when you use calendar that, that actually uh, was quite valuable for me in the long run. So uh, <clears throat> because I had this elaborate uh, list here at the bottom uh, that Canvas was generating, I save off my own calendars until uh, and you put, put them in modules. Um, for 
each module, I use the, the I, I let the big assignments be present so that they can see them. Um, uh, so that you can get to uh, an assignment from the home page. You can get to it when you go to modules. And then I have a, 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 a schedule for each of the, of the units in the course. And you can get to them that way. And I, this is perhaps the most practical way of doing it. So uh, for any, any given class meeting, they know what the, the, uh, uh, the topic is going to be uh, for that given day. So the beginning of this unit, we did King Biscuit Time, a famous radio program that started in the 1940s. Uh, we, and then we went to Memphis and looked at the, these jug bands that were recorded in the 1930s. Um, I gave them my assignment. Uh, but I also, each unit begins with a video that they watch through Canvas, and I can link that in right here. So I don't have to uh, make them go to an assignment page. It's, it's built right into the schedule. Uh, that's what I learned from KK. That was the, the big insight, was, was making everything uh, happen in one place. Um, the other thing that I did, and this, this probably does take some explaining, <coughs> I wanted them to have music to listen to, but I didn't want to do everything I played in class. And so every week I've been assigning some tunes to keep in mind, and I list them here, but then they link to them. And I have to say, this is actually really important for me. It's really important for the music faculty. I know a lot of people are stashing sound files in Canvas, okay? And that's probably illegal. <laughs> in fact, it's really dangerous. And schools of music are extremely vulnerable to this. The, the industry watches. Um, uh, you're not supposed to show a video or uh, a, a piece of music that the university itself does not own. Uh, so what I do is um, and we, the librarians got, got these and then we were able to digitize them and upload them. Uh, but there's a tunes page that the library, music librarians set up and they, we just use one page for it. But as you can see, that we have uh, streaming files that they can listen to. These are in HTML, so they, they don't crash like the old ones, which we had to do in, um, um, I don't even remember the name of the software, but it was, invented, it, it was invented in 2000, and we were still using it up until uh, a year ago. Um, but it, so here's week two, and you can see the, the pieces that I, I included there. And you could go right down and see them. And here again, at the bottom, the librarian has uh, included the reserves <coughs> so that uh, uh, the students can find them here as well. So there's a certain amount of redundancy built into all of this. But it, it always involves just going to one or two or three places, and you can find the same things every time. Um, I guess my feeling about it is this, everything got a lot easier after that discussion with KK, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with this now. I was, I was flailing pretty bad. Now, I've got some issues with grading because I got all these Com B students, and Canvas doesn't lend itself well to, to two completely different grading systems that overlap in certain places. That's a little bit hairy, but I think I have a solution for that. But actually, in terms of, of simply getting the students to land in the right places at the right times, this has worked out pretty well for us. The, the, the Common B students know what's going on, and the, the students, uh, the general uh, students, don't seem to have any issues with uh, staying caught up. So, those are the main things I would say, I think. 